Today we are talking about Quercus montana, uh, also called Quercus prinus, chestnut oak, um, which is also called rock oak. Um, it is called chestnut oak because of the leaves that look a lot like chestnut leaves-ish, uh, where we have, oops, um, a lot of lobes, a high number of lobes, and then very shallow sinuses between those lobes. Um, this is in the white oak group. Remember, we have white oaks and red oaks. Um, these are general groups. Um, white oaks have rounded lobes, so this is in our white oak group, and we'll kind of talk about the ecology of this species later and why it pertains to that. Um, so that's why it's called chestnut oak. It's also called rock oak because it grows on rocky, dry ridges. Um, a lot of our species that are uh, tolerant of the poor soils, the thin soils on rocky ridges, can do pretty well in other poor soils, like on, in cities, um, next to streams. Chestnut oak is not really one of those. It really kind of specializes in uh, more mountainous areas um, and in kind of rockier areas. Um, I'd say it's a uh, uh, stronghold is kind of the central Appalachian region where, you know, a lot of our species um, uh, have their strongholds. Um, and so, um, uh, like some species, uh, I think there's kind of a nice sort of hint um, about identification of chestnut oak um, pertaining to its bark. Um, so to me, the, the bark of chestnut oak is really distinctive. Um, it's very triangular. Um, it has these very thick ridges uh, that are super triangular. Um, and uh, a lot of our oaks, as they grow out, they, they develop these ridges and furrows in their bark. Um, but to me, this reflects the habitat that it grows. Uh, it kind of looks like the geography of the, the ridge and valley region. If you look at a topographic map or a relief map of, say, you know, West Virginia uh, uh, or a lot of Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, you have these ridges and valleys. And to me, the bark of chestnut oak looks like that with, with ridges and valleys. Um, you may have seen that the very uh, interior of the furrows can get kind of reddish on um, when the trees get a little bit bigger. Uh, and uh, usually the bark is kind of a lighter gray color than this. It's been raining for a couple days here, so that's why it's kind of a, this darker gray color. Um, but it still shows pretty pretty well those ridges and valleys. Um, the acorns are quite distinctive as well. Uh, and so we have, I guess I can drop that. Well, one thing I do want to point out while I have this here, so yet we, we took a look at the leaves, um, the buds are pretty stout. Um, and like a lot of oaks, they are clustered at the tips of stems. Um, we see here this little guy is actually not an acorn or any structure from the tree itself, that's a gall. So that is a reaction to a wasp laying, um, laying eggs in the plant tissue. Um, uh, but so back to the acorns, or to the acorns, I suppose. Um, the acorn caps are pretty distinctive. Um, they uh, are have these the kind of warty exterior that a lot of our white oaks have, um, where instead of having kind of scales, it's more of sort of warts. Um, and to me, these look like little bowls. Um, they're very round um, and kind of bowl-shaped. Um, and they don't really cover a lot of the acorns. So they really kind of only cover sort of, you know, the very top of it. Whereas, you know, some other oak species, the acorn cap will kind of envelope a lot of the acorn. Um, I had trouble finding good acorns because um, white oaks uh, will germinate in the fall. So when the, when the acorns drop in the autumn, um, they immediately start sending out their roots. So we can see here this little chestnut oak uh, acorn has sent out its root. Um, it looks like the root tissue has been kind of drying out. There's not too much kind of leaf litter in the little section where I found it. And again, we have very thin, dry soils. Um, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and bury it under leaves. It looks like a squirrel or a chipmunk or a mouse or something has been gnawing on it. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it'll send out the root so early is to make it less palatable to those uh, predators. So I'm going to go ahead and just chuck it over there and hope it does well. Um, so about this, this kind of habitat and the ecology here, um, they mostly are very, very good at regenerating from stump sprouts. So if um, you were to do a scientifically prepared clear cut where you're doing your right preparation and everything and then clear cut the stand we would get really good response of chestnut oak coming right back from the stump sprouts um, which is excellent um, they are not very tolerant of shade like a lot of their you know oak brethren where they're kind of have a mild tolerance to shade but really like to, regen uh, to regenerate and germinate out in the open um, that is where they grow the best uh, and where they do the best um, so like a lot of our other oaks uh, Chestnut oak is a really valuable species for timber and for wildlife um, and for generally the ecology of the forests. Uh, we looked at that gall, very prized um, for insects to, to eat tissue of a lot of our oak species, but you know, a white oak in the white oak group, especially same with wildlife eating the acorns. It's a massive amount of protein, uh, really important for a lot of our 
forest wildlife species. Um, on the timber side, it is in that white oak group, and so because of that, it has uh, uh, timber that is a little bit more valuable um, than red oaks uh, because it has some water tightness uh, and uh, it's very rot resistant wood, um, uh, very strong, durable wood too. So pretty uh, important for the timber industry, really important for the forests. Um, and yeah, just a great species that you will find on a lot of uh, drier ridges. Um, really important in, in these, you know, kind of sh sh shallower, thinner soils uh, of our uh, mountaintops. So there you have it, chestnut oak.